the first thing to know about isometries is that they're what I call a distinction without a difference. And what I mean by that is we spend the first part of our course studying congruence, right? congruent triangles, and how if two triangles in geometry, or if two polygons at all in geometry are congruent, we tend to think of them as being exactly the same as one another because the lengths of the sides agree, the measures of the angles agree, and so we don't care about anything else that might distinguish those two figures. As long as they are exactly the same in measure, we tend to think of them as being the same thing. But isometry is where we begin to let that go a little bit and say that between two congruent figures, there can actually be some differences. Um, not differences that would threaten their congruence, but differences of other types. So if I have one triangle here, let's call it ABC. A, B, C. And I have another triangle to which it's congruent. Maybe I'll put that other triangle over here. Okay. Um, so here's a triangle. Let's call it A prime, B prime, C prime. Okay. And we can look at these two triangles and say, well, all the corresponding sides, A, B, A prime, B prime, and A, C, A prime, C prime, and B, C, B prime, C prime, the corresponding sides all have the same measure as one another, and the corresponding angles all have the same measure as one another as well. The angle at A is congruent to the angle at A prime, the angle at B is congruent to the angle at B prime, the angle at C is congruent to the angle at C prime. And so from our perspective in chapter one, these two triangles are in fact congruent to one another. So they are the same in the sense that we typically think of in our course. But if these really were exactly the same in every, in every possible sense, then it wouldn't be possible for me to even distinguish between the two of them visually like on, the, on, the, on the whiteboard or on your piece of paper or something, right? We've actually drawn these two triangles, even though we think of them as being the same, we've drawn them as two separate things, right? We drew one of them on the left side of the page, the other one in the middle of the page. And so in a sense, they're not exactly the same because there are two different locations within, within the plane that's defined by this screen up here. So there's a relationship between these two congruent triangles. And that relationship is something we call an isometry. So an isometry is a relationship. And in mathematics, whenever we express relationships, we tend to think of them as functions, right? Functions that take in an input, provide us a unique output for each input, um, and that show us how those inputs are related to those outputs. And so in the case of an isometry, we're talking about functions which take a point, any point in the plane, R2, and produce for us another point in the plane. So we'll often use the notation A prime when we're talking about isometries as just another, a simpler way to understand what is T of A. Right? I apply the transformation T to the point A, and the result is something I call A prime. We just use primes in the notation to make things simpler, so we don't have to keep writing T of A, T of B, T of C, and so on. Um, and in fact, you spend most of your time in linear algebra studying transformations of vector spaces. And you spend a lot of time with R2 as the vector space that you study, because the xy plane is really easy to, to draw stuff on. It's really easy to understand. And it non, has non-trivial geometry associated with it. It's better than just the real line, for example. Um, and so you spend a lot of time in linear algebra studying linear transformations from R2 to R2. Right? Um, and isometries are going to be a subcategory of those. Anytime I say the word isometry, we can think of it as a transformation from R2 to R2. But not every transformation qualifies as an isometry because we need it to preserve congruence. In other words, we need, when I apply this transformation to a figure, what I need to get is another congruent copy of that same figure. So it has to preserve congruence. We can't destroy the congruence of a figure when we apply an isometry. And so the way that it does that as kind of what I mentioned here. And I'll share this document on, uh, on Blackboard with you um, when we're done here today. Um, it preserves the measure in geometry by preserving distances. So the definition of an isometry, this is, by the way, missing from our author's treatment of isometry, which to me seems pretty important. Um, the definition of an isometry is that it's a transformation for which the distance between any two points in the pre-image agrees with the distance between their images. So if you and I are six feet apart, and then we apply an isometry to ourselves and we end up somewhere else, we still have to be six feet apart, even if we're changed in our orientation or in our location, or um, we can change our reflection, our left hands can become our right hands or whatever, but we still have to have the same distance apart in our images 
that we had in our pre-images. So that's what's conveyed right here, that for all points P and Q in the plane, the distance between P and its, uh, oh, actually, I think I may have, so the distance between you and me in the pre-image has to be the same as the distance between you and me in the image. So the distance between any two points P and Q has to be the same as the distance between their image points P prime and Q prime. So in a picture, I start out with two points P and Q. I apply some transformation to them that's going to give me two image points, P prime and Q prime. And T is an isometry exactly when those distances are the same for all points P and Q that I could have drawn. So the segment from P to Q and the segment from P prime to Q prime have to be congruent to one another. So congruence, congruence. So what not to get confused, even though I did, I'm not giving you a license to do so yourself, what not to get confused in the definition of isometry is it does not mean that every point will move the same amount of distance. So just to get this note over here in the margin, it doesn't mean that every point moves the same distance. But only the distances between two points remains constant. And so it doesn't mean necessarily that P P prime is equal to Q Q prime. That would be the statement that all points are moving the same distance in their uh, image uh, as from their pre-image. But that's not necessarily the case. And as we go through some examples, I want to highlight um, which of these transformations actually do do that and which isometries don't do that.